welcome to this continuing live streaming series on creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. Today we're in the middle of a pull request to add a sort of an e-commerce section to the site. We're trying to keep things really simple, um, avoiding sort of adding an e-commerce uh, framework, although that might be desirable in the future. Um, and also trying to do things the wagtail way. So building from the wagtail page model and following a couple of uh, online tutorials, uh, which are also open source. What we've got in place so far is a basic store and some products. You can see this reflected in the code. We've got a store and a, well, a shopping cart as uh, the third part of it. So I can add an item to the cart and view the cart, update the quantities. When it refers to the cart, it's still there. I can remove the item. That's all working so far. Uh, we don't have a checkout process yet. We'll need to create that. This is just a dummy button for now. And there's a couple of nuances that I realized in the process of making this um, initial card is we will have products of different types right now. We have, it's primarily going to be a bookstore, but I wanted to design this in a way that was a little bit flexible so we could add other types of products like, sh you know, shirts or mugs or something like that that might be a good source of funds. Uh, Western Front is a nonprofit organization. It might decide to offer some uh, gifts as a sort of uh, thank you for donations. Although there are some legal constraints around that. So I kind of read through the code and we have this generic product page. I'm reading through the, my own code and kind of reviewing it and uh, just looking at it with sort of fresh eyes like a would normally happen during a regular pull request review, although I'm the only developer here. And I don't really want to pollute this product with um, book-specific metadata. So what I believe we'll do here is um, essentially create, use inheritance, create a child product, a, pro, a child model that inherits from product. And I was just uh, kind of thinking about the way I've created this initial product model, what the fields are. I believe this will have to change a little bit. If we come up here, um, where are the choices to find here? Okay, that's, so I, I think I'll have to take two steps back or one step back to go forward here. Sort of at first, I was following a tutorial and debating from a little bit, and it has these product categories, uh, which I defined through the Wagtail, which can be defined through the Wagtail admin. I think I'll have to deprecate this feature. If I go to store, categories, you can see uh, you can sell books. The problem being, um, these are relating to just one product model. Uh, and again, I don't have uh, book related metadata, specifically the author field here. And if we have a t-shirt or a mug or something, they wouldn't have an author. So that's not a good design. I think I'll have to deprecate this product category field. We probably will have images relating to all products. I mean, in our store, at least, um, well, the books are. So we'll, here's the reference site. It should more or less work this way. And I could certainly just make it a bookstore. And then most everything would be working fine in that case. While we're here, it's worth pointing out that there's this add to cart form that's displaying in the product summary or teaser. And if I look,
here. I haven't been able to get that add to cart form to display on the product summary, but I do have it here. So that'll be the second thing I'll try to get to today during this live streaming session. That could turn out to be non-trivial, but I reckon it should be possible, if not straightforward. Uh, you know, a few lines of code. I don't think that should require a whole lot, but I'm prepared to be wrong on that. I'll also have to figure out what the editing interface would look like here. Which right now this is adding a product, specifically this product class. And if we have multiple product types, I would have to support that somehow. Books. I suppose I could have a menu item for each product type. That's a start. All right, so let's get back to it. The first thing I'll do is go ahead and deprecate this product category field, or remove it or delete it, and the product category model, and the category index page. So that'll be okay, it'll clean up our, our models a little bit. I'm just gonna do that in a way that's safe. So I think I'll start by the, deleting the field. Hopefully I don't get tangled up too much in these migrations. places. That's been a source of confusion for me. This is going to automatically, when you define the content panels for the page, it automatically generates a form. And so we're basically getting some errors from Django Core relating to, it's trying to generate this form here. That one took me a while to catch on to that it's actually uh, the edit form or the create form. In any case, now I should be able to make that migration. and delete these categories as well as from the wagtail hooks delete I'll have to come back to this menu how I'll organize the menu but essentially we will not have the categories index page also has a little bit of metadata for the content hierarchy wagtail page models are a tree type um, hierarchy with a root page and then you can control the sub page and parent page types so that you can basically sort of uh, create a kind of like a filing cabinet and decide what uh, types of files can go in each, each of the folders it's a good way of organizing things and keeping the content editor from sort of just randomly creating um, files or items and losing track of them. It also generates, it's relating to the, the URLs as well. Okay, so we're not running that. I was gonna kind of give a demo of that, but anyway, let's try to make these migrations. I always get nervous around these migrations. So 
It's weird that there's a syntax error in the Problematic. I might have to just delete all these migrations again, flatten them. I have to do this periodically. I thought I had a script for that. Let me see if I can find one. is coming from simple is better than complex the blog deleting all the migrations and regenerating oh, no. Let's see, this is weird. Maybe I don't have the dependency and stuff. I don't understand how that could happen. Challenging. All right, let's just try this. Clone the direct, clone the repository. 
I don't understand how I can get myself so tangled up in this kind of stuff, but okay. Oh, wrong button, sorry. That's not what I was trying to do. It does have a few of my migrations here. Open the branch, the work in progress branch. Right now we're on master. Switch that. Let's see if that's still running. I have to open a Python file to let. Uh, VS Code another we're in a Python project. Let's see if it picks it up now. There we go. Migrate this stores. Fresh. Now we've got a store page up. All right, cool. <clears throat> this is going to need a couple of um, a little bit of placeholder content, real quick. Delete this. This is where we'll start to dig in. So I'll delete again this category and product 
index page. I'll need the product index page though, actually. Let's see. Where do I? The store actually should in, let me double check the code real quick. I've been away from this code for about one month We're on vacation. So let me just see what I was thinking. We'll come back here to store. Models. Get store index page. That gets all the products. All right, so the store index page should be all we need. Don't know what I did. Uh, the product index page is sort of acting as a, um, <laughs> a folder. So now we'll go ahead and try to clean up the models. All products need a description of price, availability, and product image can be generic, but we're gonna drop the categories. And hence also the category index page. We don't need that. It's so frustrating. Store O2, so it's got a syntax error here in this. embedded there the dependency here it's deeply nested in the among the wagtail core sort of migrations so I can't really just jump to this one 41 huh. well Try and see if this works. Delete. Create model products. Store index and product. Okay, that's looking good. But why did it not find them? Oh, because it's. run this is your zero one somehow um, Django keeps track of which migrations have been run and so the auto generated ones this is your one initial had already been run all right now I think we're 
looking good. <clears throat> Let's run the code on the server. my super user because I just blasted the database again I need that scaffolding I've been trying I've tried twice to get some um, not scaffolding but f like facets so I can just get this site up and running real quick but something is weird with that and I haven't opened a support request on the wagtail side side of things so just let me do a tutorial I'll do that right now as we speak Yeah, this is the same area I was getting basically.
All right, that needs to be fixed. I believe it's problematic enough. People are experiencing it, and this is a non-answer. I mean, yeah, we can go to support for Stack Overflow. I respect that it's a good thing, but apparently the support's not happening. There was two Stack Overflow questions with the exact same um, problem. I'm trying to, you know, using this dump data to load data, uh, getting errors, no support on Stack Overflow. So let's do it. Let's get that resolved. And uh, it's just not straightforward. There's something weird with page model, I think, that's causing this underlying problem for it. Something Wagtail specific, and that was great. So, hopefully they'll be receptive to that issue. All right, onward, what do we got? Creating super user, super secret development password. And it's very common password because I'm in development environment. Run the server. Products are undefined. Cool. All right, let's figure out the order of operations here. Let me just try creating this uh, book product. Yeah, plural authors. So if I come back over to magazine or library would be fine too. Might be a little easier. Gonna reuse some code here. Library item. Huh. Okay, I see. Library autumn author book author. Hope that's gonna not collide, but I typically will, because these are all inheriting from the book, uh, from the product page a model. So these related name, related names, collide. But let's try it. Hey, what's up, Coldy2? Welcome to the chat. Just saw your message. Sorry if it was a moment ago. So we're going to re uh, run these migrations. In inline panel is not defined on either. Where did I learn Django? Uh, Coldy2 asks, where did I learn Django? From the docs? Uh, yeah. The docs are really comprehensive. Um, Honestly, I'm learning from a bunch of sources, though. I'll show you a couple of them. They're really good. Uh, right now, I'm reading a couple of books. I like reading books on these types of subjects because they can be comprehensive. In other words, uh, very thorough, going through, um, progressively introducing you to uh, the new concepts. And that's compared with, like, finding random tutorials on YouTube or something like that where you might get a little glimpse here and a little glimpse there. But... You know, unless you have a really good tutorial series, it's not going to build on, on the previous knowledge. Now, the Django tutorial is fairly good. I'd say comprehensive for that as well. Uh, but it leaves a lot to be desired. And the documentations are more of a reference manual. So let's take a look at these books real quick. Uh, Django. It's on LeanPub. 
Django for Beginners. This is a great one. Every chapter in this Django for Beginners book is um, more or less self-contained. You build an app in each chapter. Hello world, you learn, start working with um, basic pages, uh, message board, blog, forms, user accounts. And uh, it also teaches you basically being self-contained that teaches you the full cycle, full development cycle of app. creating an app, the database models, adding an admin page to it, creating templates to view the, and allowing ed, end users to um, create content through the front end. Really rudimentary tests, not super in-depth, but basically um, enough to give you the idea of the testing flow, how to use GitHub, and getting out deployed on Heroku's free tier. So every chapter follows that more or less that same um, flow. William S. Vincent also has published uh, three books now on Django for beginners, APIs, and professionals. Uh, I went ahead and bought all three of them uh, just because they're so uh, well done. And the code is all open source on GitHub. So any of the code you're building into your own products or projects, you can freely publish. Um, Django for beginners. It's under MIT license, so yeah, MIT. There it is for all the chapters. W.S. Vincent, Django for Beginners. Um, there's also one on Pact. Called Django 2 by example. I went through this, and in fact, this um, project I'm working on now uses um, code from this Django 2 by example for this e-commerce section of the site. So you can build a blog, social application, uh, online shop is where we're working now, and even making payments. So it's got three chapters just on building an online shop. Then you can also build an e-learning platform. These types of resources, and all the code here, by the way, is open source and can be used in your own projects. You, you publish online, uh, whether or not your project is open source, it's MIT licensed. But back to what I was saying, these types of um, books that give you this kind of hands-on, granular experience building small projects and getting them launched and deployed, I think that's invaluable and could serve as the foundation of, of your own sort of like idea. If you want to build an, a social networking site or online learning site, you might have a, a creative spark just by going through these tutorials. And certainly the patterns you apply, you learn can be applied to multiple types of projects. Uh, because Django is code is pretty consistent across projects. Uh, Coley says, "I oh, thanks. I have latency because my internet sucks." Well, yeah, that some of the latency could be on mine. My internet's not the best. Also, this stream could have some delay. What I'll do is I'll post these two links in the chat, and I'm not affiliated with either of these sort of publishers. But what I do, my strongest reason for recommending them is that the code, the source code is open source. It means freely available for you to use, learn from, modify, share, you know, reuse in your own projects. Um, there are some Django books out there where the code isn't available uh, as open source. And I think that's a little bit kind of fuzzy area because if you're trying to use um, you know, these books to make your own projects, uh, there are certainly times where I've had to just more or less copy and paste directly from the book. I, um, there wasn't much uh, latitude for me to change it for our particular context. So yeah, having these open source on GitHub is a good, good thing. And it looks like these are all three on offer. A bundle price. This Django for, for fresh, uh, excuse me, for professionals was published like last week. I had pre-ordered it, so I was really excited to get that. Cool beans, that's how I learned Django. Um, by the way, I'm using Wagtail on top of Django. So for Wagtail, I mainly learned it from the docs, but I've also gotten really great support from the Wagtail GitHub, which I'm now learning is not a support channel. I should be using Stack Overflow. But in any case, the, the core developers have been very receptive and lent me a helping hand and even implemented features uh, that are requested with quick turnaround. 
So much, much appreciation with Wagtail documentation. Uh, it has some basic uh, demos you can follow as well. Wagtail is basically the WordPress of Django. It gives you this really smooth editing experience with custom menus and inline editing and block-based, uh, what they call a stream field block-based editor, similar to uh, the w w WordPress um, Gutenberg publishing um, approach. You define different blocks and you kind of snap them together like Legos. You can reorder them. And the blocks can be anything from just a paragraph or a header all the way to like rich media. You can make custom blocks with your own template. It could be calendar widget, anything. It's pretty powerful and flexible. Really been enjoying that. All right, so where are we at? Essentially, I've got books that need an author and those authors should be orderable. In other words, they can be the order of the authors can be changed if you have a primary author and secondary author or if you want to order them alphabetically. I just need to make sure things are wired up and my imports are correct. I think I would import inline panels not defined, parental keys probably not going to define. So I'm just going to come here and copy and paste my imports. I used PyCharm for a while and that was really nice. It would actually suggest the imports for you. thing about uh, starting with Wagtail is that it actually, well, it's mixed blessings, but it kind of um, abstracts or hides some of the uh, the redundant parts of Django from you as well, like creating URLs, generating forms. Um, it does that all more or less for you if you are comfortable having your users manage content through the Wagtail admin UI. It'll do the, it'll create your forms. Uh, and then when you're defining your models in the model uh, constant hierarchy, it'll automatically do your URLs for you. Uh, and then a few other things, uh, setting up page um, context, I guess. Well, Django more or less does that. When Oh, your views, that's what I'm thinking. The Wagtail will generate your views for you as well. Wire them to URLs. All right, so I need orderable. Orderable right here. Wagtail core models, orderable in page, Wagtail core models, orderable in page. Page chooser panel is not defined. I think this will be here. And this should be just a tuple now, so I can do multiple lines. Hooks. This should be a book. Title. I don't know if that's a font awesome icon. Cold D2, what are, uh, type of projects are you interested in building? I should say that Django is not suited for every project. But it is pretty versatile, particularly now. Um, well, it's got channels, which makes it appropriate for real-time apps that don't need um, content delivery guarantees. If you can, it, channels has at most once delivery. So if it's, a, I can't think of actually many cases where at most once is super well suited. I mean, I would, if I'm having a chat, I wouldn't want to lose those chat messages. But in any case, that's the design of it. Uh, it's using WebRTC, book is not defined, and I just need to import that. But 
But in any case, if you're developing stuff that's content oriented, Django and Wagtail are certainly still pretty solid. All right, let's see what we got here. So if I just go to the main app, I suppose. And I go to store books. And that was the, okay. Store book. Migrations. There we go. All right. So before I get too far ahead of myself, I need to run server. This should only be books. I should only be able to add parent page type of things like that under the product index page. Uh, what this is basically doing for people who haven't seen uh, Wagtail before, haven't been part of this uh, tutorial series, uh, Wagtail is a hierarchical content model is a tree based content model for, for these wagtail pages and it's asking me what the parent page should be I need to put this somewhere in the tree and I only have this intro site um, page currently it's the only page I've added in, uh, since I reset the content but this would be showing me a whole list of all the content of all the types and I really don't want to just let uh, these books to be um, kind of attached to any arbitrary branch of the tree they should really only be attached to the product index page, which more or less in my, um, the practice here uh, that I'm doing, it creates a folder. So we'll see how that works in just a minute. So you do those, you constrain the hierarchy, constant hierarchy by creating sub page types and parent page types. Now I have a product and now a book product. Some page types should be empty because I don't want uh, books to be higher having children. I think um, parent looks like that. Let's see if that works. No books have been created. Create one of the following product to next page. I could have this wrong. Parent page type. I'll double check that. I always forget it's a little bit inconsistent. Uh, let's double check. Where did I? In the magazine, I defined parent page type. Parent page types. Parent page types. Okay, that's correct. I don't think you need a migration for this, but I'll double check. No. Okay, they, uh, this one catches me up a lot too. You have to do it both ways. Look, you have to define the ch 
subpage types for the from the parent page and the parent page types from the subpage uh, to be to have a really strict uh, content hierarchy. So let's refresh that over here. Whoops. There we go. Product index page. So flesh out the contents, contents a little bit. Welcome. And add a child page of welcome. The store index page. page to be created anywhere but underneath the store. For example, if I added child page of welcome a moment ago, the product index page was showing up there. Let's try it again. There's the product index page, but that shouldn't be the case. And if I clean that up, I'll go to welcome. Or next page. Huh. Ah, that's the other problem. This is the default page that comes with Wagtail. Delete it. Create the home page here. Wagtail is also set up to be multi-site, so you can host several pages, several websites from the same Wagtail instance. This could be useful if you have like a multi-site blog or if you're managing small websites for a community or a business. So it just gives you a little bit of a, well, it's not hassle, but yeah, you just got to be mindful of it when you're developing. All right, so now we're back. With, um, our content hierarchy, we have the welcome page with the store underneath there. And the child page is now show, uh, showing me the product index, index page. If I um, go back to the welcome page, the product index page is not here because I've applied a more specific content restriction there. Publish that. Now here's the cool thing about it. You got this welcome, notice the uh, folder icon. Store, notice the folder icon. Products doesn't have a folder icon right there. But now it knows that the only thing I can add underneath the product is uh, index page is the books. It's a book. And our book model is inheriting uh, the title from the page model description, price, availability, and image from the product model. Image, description, price, and availability. And authors from the book model. So this is exactly what I was hoping would happen. Uh, there's a few other things I'll have to make sure are gonna line up in the shopping cart and checkout, but I believe this should be fine. So let's add. Faith and Breakfast North Pacific. This book here. Description. Uh, 
prize was 18, I think. And then the author's field. I think I have the image here. Authors is optional. What I need to do is add some authors. So I'll just run through real quick and set up some more content. Hey, JanTube, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. Sorry if the um, shark animation is a little bit annoying. I don't know how to change it. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and uh, scaffold a little bit more content here. So under the welcome page, this is our home page instance. There's only one of these, one home page. We're going to add, oh, what I'm trying to get to is the authors. And the authors are a couple folders deep under the community. And I just need a, uh, a little bit of content there for our stream field. So then under the community, we have essentially four types of entities. And I'll just add just people real quick. Uh, we need people, and actually this is a meeting. I'll certainly um, give a demo of how the other parts of the app work in the future, and it's just been an ongoing process. I don't really have, want to spend too much time uh, scaffolding all the content right now, but we're gonna add the meeting real quick. North Pacific Yearly Meeting. I don't think I have their to yearly meeting. I don't have the website or anything handy, but those are optional fields. Okay, so now we have just one. What it, it's one content, uh, one contact. There's these three different contact types, but the cool thing about it is now, if I hop back over here, when I go to authors, I'll show you this. It's going to let me select, this is again a book author, it's going to let me select from person, meeting, or organization, so those three contact types we have here in the user interface. So when I click uh, choose a page, it's generically saying choose a page, because uh, these are all inheriting from the Wagtail page model. I was kind of strange, it's got that twice. Meeting index page and meeting. I don't know how that happened. All right, so we'll go ahead and publish this now. Publish. And when I view live, pre prepared for some red, or uh, some bright yellow text, sorry for this, but uh, I don't have a template store book, so I need to create that, no problem. Wagtail doesn't automatically create the templates for us. What I'll do is, uh, For right now, I'm not going to get too fancy. I'll rename this to book, in fact. I don't know if I should do that. I'm thinking for a second. I'll leave it as product. I'll add book. And what I need to do is figure out a way to organize this that I can inherit. Extends product.html inside a book. Uh, but I don't have that off the top of my head. so. I'll end up duplicating some stuff here, but more or less we have this description, image, price. And I'm trying to get a, and the form will display on the product page. So that's cool. I'll test if that works in a moment. So now if I view live, we've got the faith and practice with an add to cart form, and it works uh, because the cart doesn't really care if it's a page model or a product model or a book model as long as it's got the correct fields it serializes those fields so that was a cool thing that that just worked out of the box let's double check something if i change the quantity yep everything's working there uh i should commit this before i get too far i had myself too excited let's see what i did here so this is the 
door models. I actually want that to not be commented. Okay. So yeah, we added the um, our product index page. We added the uh, hmm, what's a quick way of phrasing this? I'm not even sure about not spell that or say that word. Um, it's a hierarchy. Now we'll add the authors. So the, if we come back here to the individual um, book template view, we don't have the authors field displaying there. So that I can kind of get from another model. Let's see, home page. We can close this. We're done with that. Uh, we're pretty much done with this Wagtail hooks. I believe it's, if I go to store, there's books. Now I've got faith and practice not specifically their meeting it's working good I will close this where we have product index page so I need this and a good place for the authors uh, code would be probably the library items I can copy and paste some stuff there so I don't have to think too hard about it templates to think about this how this works these page template inheritance so we can compose these in a pretty effective way so right under the title I think I'll have the authors and authors is optional really it shouldn't be This has worked so I can kind of explain this code real quick since they copied and pasted I don't want to gloss over it um, you know so this is just basically HTML um, where you can inherit it's basically object oriented HTML in some way so you can inherit sections of content and override them and uh, inside of these um, sort of well they're not quite mustache but these are block helpers uh, we can access the page. This is all inheriting from the Wagtail page model. And there's a specific um, field on this that's not part of the Wagtail page model. Anytime you inherit and you put in your own, um, so I'm inheriting from field and I'm adding my own, I'm inheriting from page and adding my own fields to it. A couple of degrees separated, but you know, we're product to book and in any, any case, so uh, I can access this author's field and get all of them. Uh, it's a query set. Iterating over each one of them using a wagtail helper to create the uh, page URL. I'm traversing, I got a little bit of redundancy because I'm traversing the book author into this author field and going out across these relationships. So coming in through the parental key relationship and out through this foreign key relationship into the actual author, um, which is part of the page model and constrained to these three types. This is pretty um, kind of meta stuff. It took me a long time to work out, but um, so essentially I'm having Wagtail auto generate the uh, page URL for this entity, which is two degrees separated through um, sort of a join table and then getting the string representation of that 
since she, essentially it'll print the title, but you could override the string representation. And looping over those and adding a comma between them if there is more than one, otherwise no comma, if it's the only one or the last one. So a little bit dense code, but at the same time, not a, not very verbose. I mean, not a whole lot to it. Uh, took some fidgeting, fiddling, and figuring out, but uh, it works. So, and when I click this link, it brings me to the North Pacific Yearly Meeting page, which doesn't have any info. That's another story. I didn't add any content, but it's working. And actually, now that I'm here, I should add products. So I want to. The purpose of these pages, the contact pages, is to display re related information and content that's been published on this website, whether in the magazine, the media library, or now the sort of bookstore or store. Uh, since none of those have been published and there's no child um, contacts, these meetings are also hierarchical. Um, there's nothing displayed here. None of that information exists. Likewise, Oh, the store actually works. Now this is cool. This was a, I was kind of in the back of my mind hoping this would, would be the case. Uh, and I'm really glad that it is. What happened here, if I go to the store index page, the store index page right here, that's what generates this content that's fed into the template. The only thing the store index page has is an intro field. So if I edit this page, you can see I've got the title, which comes from the Wagtail page model, because I didn't explicitly define that here in an intro field, which does get defined on this specific model. Let's take a look at this um, store index page template, and you can see what I'm getting at here. So I've got the page title. Uh, and in this case, I was able to access the page intro directly without the page specific. So I might have to just walk that back. There may, there may be an improvement in the way Wagtail works that I now don't have to use this specific. Hmm. Interesting. But here's the cool part. Here's what I'm getting at that I was uh, glad to see just worked. So these are essentially just um, these models auto generate views and things like that. And the view um, takes some context. And by default, that context is um, going to contain the sort of the page object. But you can also attach other things to the uh, context. It's just a dictionary. And what I did here is I, in a previous effort, when I just generically had uh, the product before creating the book um, child model, I decided, yo, let's get all the products into this template. So if I go back. So we've got the intro text there, page title, and now this is a listing of product objects. But it's actually showing a book. And I, that's just by convention of following, you know, using model inheritance. It just worked out of the box. This is the first time I've ever done this. But I kind of think it, it represents, well, at least a couple of things. One is, um, I'm not sure how to summarize these, but. Django is a pretty simple and consistent framework. And once you start getting an, an intuition for how it's organized, it's really consistent. You can kind of almost guess how it'll work. It's very well designed and it's over 14 years of, of design has gone into this. It's not a sort of fly by night uh, framework like we might be experiencing in, I don't know, in the JavaScript community or ecosystem. Uh, it's been around for a while. And it's continually evolving. So yeah, I guess the main thing that this is sh showcasing is that uh, just the power of having a well-designed framework and how things can just work um, and save you some time. That's not always the case. I, I certainly have had some struggles and head scratching moments. And I'm probably going to have a head scratching moment in just a little bit when I try to add the um, add to cart form uh, to the product preview. I might just call it a night. It's been an hour and 12 minutes on this. But in any case, I need this add to cart form to appear 
here in the book template product product teaser template is that what it's called product store index page for product and products uh, I haven't abstracted just haven't pulled it out it's just right there all right before we get too far ahead of ourselves let's go ahead and commit let's see what we did basically added book authors likewise this custom uh, this code it just copy and paste worked it, um, because I've figured out the convention and um, following similar patterns across the um, site let me see if I can take that specific part out of there book HTML open the file let's see if that works yeah, it worked. Okay, I'll, I like that. Clean up the code. Okay. changes push them to github just taking a little bit okay now in the meantime I close out a few of these tabs get ready for some head scratching So I should add a link here to the store. I need to consolidate this menu, figure out uh, how to, it's already taken up full width. I think I'll add uh, a bootstrap um, hero section with the menu above it and move this site name, site title and slogan out into that hero section, maybe the search box into the hero section, but not, not right now. Why is this not pushing? Oh, I see. I didn't notice above here. It was asking for the password. Cancel. All right. Store next page. So yeah, basically for each product price. In the store index page. We're going to add the product form. Now the way I've done that, the, let's see on the, so when I'm viewing an individual product, there's a car, I add the product form, I'm able to inject into the context for that product. Now the problem is on the store index page, I'm iterating over the product objects. So 
so I'm not sure that this context gets populated with the form. I need to figure out a different approach. So this is one where I don't think guessing is gonna gonna, gonna work. So. If I look, let's check out the template for the product. I might just have that information there already. It's looking for the page ID. Let's take a look here. So the store next page. Let's just try to get the. Uh, so this is the card. Let's just try to get the form into the card real quick. I hope this just works, but I don't think it will. This needs to be indented. Let's find out. All right, I'll clean up the um, layout in a minute. So we got a form here with a CSR token, which actually won't be present because I'm not rendering. So that's not going to work first thing. I'll leave it in there, but yeah, it's because I'm not using actual form instance. Cart add three. No product matches. Just let me double check. If I go to pages, store, products, this is 10, so that didn't work. Ah, okay, so the first thing is um, I gotta get the right ID in there. That might just fix it. So, what we're looking at is instead of the page ID, Sorry, instead of the page ID, which this page represents the products. Index. I need the product ID inside of this for loop. So let's start there. Go back to the store. Just refresh it. And that worked, oh goodness. All right. So if I delete it, go back to the store. Let's add five of them, add to cart. It just worked. Oh, wait. 
So what about this CSRF token? Let's add five more. Ten. So that works too. That's CSRF. So everything seems to be working out. Let's go ahead and clean up this form. I think it just needs to go into that div, and that's about it. So let's try to include it. That way we don't get too much junk in our template. Now I just don't remember the... Uh... Might be able to parameterize the template so I can pass in the page here. But let's come back to that in just a minute. First off, how do I include it? So we did that a second ago. Where did I find that? Okay. So we're using it here as well. We got book, product form. Take this step at a time. Let's take the Django docs. Yeah, it's just include. Afraid of this, the CSRF token.
So here you don't need a CSRF token, it's kind of interesting. But if I include it, it just needs one. I don't want to wrestle this. So I'll have to leave it be for now. Seems to be working without it. Now oh, there it is. Okay. I'm going to have to take a short break and then uh, come back and figure out this CSRF issue uh, across the site. Request forgery to make sure that you can't just randomly um, interact with forms from an external site. So I uh, have to come back to it. But in any case, I'll be right back.
back and ready to continue fighting onward. And I believe the um, issue might not be so difficult. I haven't provided the uh, add to product form in the context for the store index page. And I believe that passing that in now should have a valid CSR of token. Let me double check what else we did here. So when I'm do, uh, displaying a product, HTML, How does it know? I guess it's the only form on the page. I'm not sure how the product page knows specifically that this is the cart add product form. So let me go ahead and get that CSR of token back in there. And at this point, I might be able to abstract this. I just want to get it working again. I was excited, but it wasn't quite working the way I was expecting it to. So I just want to clear out the page cache, go back to the store, try adding one of these to cart. So that seems to be working now. I'm not sure if I should try this inheritance bit. I would like to to clean it up because now I have the same form in three places basically. basically call it product inside of this page. So here I have the product in scope, so that should be fine. And the form likewise should be in scope. I'm not sure how that'll work. Delete that. 
Oops, wrong button. Yeah, deleted that. Now let's go magazine and then store. So add a couple of those. Let me see if I need this form to be passed in there. Magazine store. For some reason, I'm not super confident this is working how I'm expecting it to. And over here, so if I go to this product page, Here I have to pass in the page because that is the product essentially. So Seems to be working. Okay, so it was all about context and getting that form into the context. And I guess since it's the only form, Django just looks for the form in the the request body and maps those fields. If I had multiple forms in the page, then I think I'd be a little bit uh, be a little bit more problematic. And that's what I think could happen. If you have multiple products, so let's go and add another product. For example, bookstore. Giving up something good or something better. So store books, add book. I'll come back to this to get the books listing on their page. But basically, so I add to cart here works. And if I go to the store, to add three of those and five of these. Let's see what happens if I click add to cart here. Good, it just knows the, that this one was submitted and the other one wasn't submitted. Ah, it seems to be working. I think I should commit these. 
do a little bit more work to get the listing of books on the contact page and call it good and call it in the dates almost two hours at that point maybe over two hours just get a little more tea So let's hop back over here and look at the author page and work on their context a little bit. What I really think I can do is just borrow this but change it a little bit. I don't know if we want to add to cart form on that. Probably not. Probably not on this listing here. All right. So we'll go back to... We'll go to a model we haven't seen or an app we haven't seen, the contact app. Templates, contact, HTML. I believe I need to open the model one more time for the store. We'll see what this reverse book's authored. All right, cool. If page book's authored. one or more books authored then we'll I have this wagtail image helper that's not been imported. tags. Alright. Value page URL tag expected page object got book author object. Okay, so 
this is because there's a table in between. There's like a join table. So let me see here. We got a book author object. So book author is that join table. It's got a relationship to a book and a relationship to an author. I just need to go. There we go, cleans it up a little bit. Again, this is necessary because this book instance is actually a book author. By way of example, if I go to the admin, I create, well, job page, magazine, text page.
Oh yeah, basically what I'm trying to do here is add an article under the North Pacific yearly meeting just for testing it out. So let's just go ahead and do that. Community people. Oh, this should be in our meetings, darn it. I think it is actually. There we go, now we're in our Pacific Yearly Meeting. I'm gonna go back to store. No, pages. Getting a little bit tired. Good. That's a good thing. Magazine. On puzzles. Personal history of career. If I edit this one and add just the meeting as the author, even though it's not the case. And then Strickland, just because Dan is the actual author. Publish this. View it live. Here's what I'm trying to get at. We've got articles and books now appearing on the profile page. So yeah, that's the, the way we would want it. That displays the related content. We'll work on layout uh, for these a little bit later, but let me double check one more thing. So this is an H. Notice it's a little bit inconsistent. It's just a div card title. Lead. And this is actually an H3. I'll ask Mary her opinion on this, which one she would prefer. She'd probably like the authored by as well. Hmm. I'll go ahead and add the author by field. It's a little bit redundant information on the same page. A magazine summary. Card title lead. Last card title. It looks good. Consistent. It's not jumping off the page with these titles. All right, we'll 
含めて。All right, well, I think that's about it. Uh, got these changes committed. In the next section, uh, next uh, part of the series, we'll be working on getting this store linked into the navigation menu, but more importantly, starting the checkout process, including um, payment processing. And we have some, we're still in discernment a little bit, but uh, essentially the primary uh, consideration is PayPal, but they have a, PayPal is a service they acquired that the name is escaping me right now, but it allows multiple payment sources, something, I can't remember the name of it, in any case, we'll be looking into the payment processor as well as getting this checkout flow and building an orders page so Mary can track the order status and things like that. Once they hit this uh, shopping, once they hit the checkout button, I believe it'll initiate an order and it'll show the status, um, whether or not the payment was successful and whether or not the order has been fulfilled. So this has been another episode of this live coding series on creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. I uh, appreciate the, uh, those who joined me in the chat, Cody too, Coldy too, for saying hello and uh, asking, asking a couple of questions. And thanks to uh, JanTube, for subscribing. It's always good to see uh, familiar faces. I think I've seen JanTube in a previous uh, session. If you're watching this on YouTube, do feel free to uh, ask any questions or add comments in the, uh, below the video, I'll respond to those promptly. If you're curious about the source code, it's open source on GitHub, github.com slash Western friend. So all of this, you can incorporate into your own project. All right, well, thanks again for watching and have a great day.